Hello, everybody. My name is Glenn Shrest, and I'm here with Grace Piet. We're both engineers at Meta, and we're going to be giving you an overview of OR3 based limate liquid cooling. There's going to be a more detailed component level review in the presentation right after this. So this slide shows the group. We have a pretty big makeup here. We've got manifold suppliers, rack suppliers, and various valve suppliers, as well as uh, some ODMs out there. Um, and our, the scope of this is not just valves. It's actually developing a holistic solution. So on the left there, you see we go everywhere from rack frame interfaces all the way down to IT gear. And I want to point out the end product of this will obviously have components, but these various work streams are going to either be a specific spec for a component or a guideline to help people develop things to work with this solution. So I'm going to give a high-level overview, or, or overview excuse me, of RV3 limate liquid cooling. And again, in the following slides, there will be more detail, but I'm going to stay more high-level trying to explain the architecture and the design approach. So it starts off with a, a frame, has an add-on bolt-on liquid cooling kit that can be added to a, a, a normal ORV3 rack to make it into a liquid cooling capable rack. The manifolds as shown in that image there are split at the, the two corners of the rear with the hot and cold manifolds. And the IT gear side con contains the plug valve and the manifolds contain the socket valve. All connections are at the back of the rack and the valves are designed to self-align as you insert the chassis and they mate. This is a bit more of a detailed view of that rear area there, and you can see the, the blue nipple on the, on the plug nested in kind of a box. That's to protect it from damage while it's being handled, the chassis is being handled. And the, the green valve there is on kind of a translucent item. That's actually the manifold itself, and it's connected to the manifold there. I'm going to get into a little bit of detail on the, the, the valves. Again, we're going to talk more about this in, in more and more detail uh, later on. But the basics of the valve are the socket has ISO threads and a P EPDM seal for a reliable connection to the manifolds. The hex on the valve is to help tighten it. It features an alignment cone as well to help gather the plug as they come to alignment. Then the plug side of the design, it has a, a cup and a nut. That's what actually, when you're tightening it into the chassis, affixes the and locates the valve into its appropriate location. And the floating body is the portion of the, the plug that actually adapts to misalignment, whether it be radial or angular. Then on the back of the, the plug floating body is a bar fitting that connects tubing to convey fluid into the gear itself. This video here shows a few scenarios of mating. Right there, it's being it's alignment. It, they're both aligned. Now, this next one will show where there's a radial offset, and you can see the floating body moving and adjusting for the location of the socket. And this last cycle is a combination of angle and radial offset. It's all self-contained in that cup. You're not adding additional features or components. You're just installing it as you see it here. And uh, one of the performance features of this is has allows a very large uh, relative radial alignment as well as angular misalignment. And uh, the next presentation will get more in the specifics of that. But also it has a large working range, meaning much like a connector has wipe, there's a large working range here as far mating distance as far as when the valves actually flow fluid. And so some of the updates we've made over this year is we released the revised design early in the year. We had a mini build to kind of vet the design and a larger build. And uh, towards the end of the summer, we finished the testing on that. We made significant progress from the last revision because we made some adjustments both in interfaces and the length of the plug to help with leverage. Um, we also um, made some additional things around surface finish and things like that. Uh, and we're about to start testing on the newest versions. They're just starting to arrive at the, the, the various uh, valve supplier sites. So what's unique about what we're doing is there's a lot of interoperability testing going on. And actually, all four of the valve suppliers are doing testing. We've kind of split the work across all of the sites and all the suppliers. Some of the, the changes we've made around areas of specification testing include we had to revise the fixtures to work with a new de longer design. We've also developed a force versus distance curves. And what's that, what that's useful for is for developers when they're developing their mechanisms to work around the way the valves mate and the force profile. It, you're not just designing it, not understanding it. You actually understand at what mate distances, what forces to expect. 
We've also updated test margins so we have more confidence in the final spec that we, we uh, publish. We've also added some new en environmental tests including things like salt spray. On the manifold design, the idea around this is to use standard off-the-shelf tubing and then where the key interfaces are around where the valves mount and the interfaces to the rack, those are precision machined to help with registration. The design is also uh, interfaces the liquid cooling kit and aligns to both the kit and features native to the frame itself. And one important thing is the, the manifolds have to be part of the structural uh, element with all the loads from the fluids and the springs as you can see that large uh, array of, of valves there. It adds up to be quite a bit of force and uh, it's not just a thin tube. There's some thickness to this and some depth to it to allow for, for that. Uh, and then we also added an optional top and bottom connections with different type of adapters. He has the ability to do um, QDs like we're showing here. Also you can do hose fittings. We're letting, leaving that up to the end, end developer. Um, previous valves, manifolds, excuse me, that we developed were really focused on bottom connections. We're trying to make this more modular. So some of the design updates, we made uh, changes to the design to allow for the elbow swivel, swivel fitting you see there and the OCP LQD. We've also adopted, uh, allowed ability to have, again, top and bottom connections. We've developed a modular purge assembly which could attach to the top there and connect to that large QD and why that matters is that's quite often something that does poor reliability and you want to be able to change that without bringing your system down. You can do a quick connect on that. We've also made minor design changes to improve the structural stiffness. On the IT gear, IT gear design, so I want to be clear here, this is an, as a concept. So. Your chassis doesn't have to be this size or this form factor, but the interfaces are what really matter. So I just want to point that out. The design has a novel injector mechanism to reduce installation forces. The injector features compound motion and long travel because of the way the valves interact with each other. And the plug mounts to the chassis uh, with a panel nut as shown earlier, installing from the inside out with a, with a panel nut from the outside. Some of the updates we've made in the most recent chassis that we're just finishing integrating now to ship out to for testing is we've improved the mechanical advantage and made it more smooth. We've also improved the hold open feature. So you don't want to have the levers moving on you and the paws sticking out when you're doing servicing because that can catch on frame features as well as cabling. So that's to help with serviceability. We've also made adjustments to the interfaces to adjust to the larger valve depth. Okay, now I'll be handing it over to Grace. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to be talking some about the system level testing that we did. I just want to call out that following our talk, there will be um, another talk that will give more specific updates and talk about the testing that was done on the specific components. So I'll be talking on kind of full system testing. So starting with the rack level mate cycle testing, we um, mated and unmated the chassis multiple times and measured the mate forces. We found that we uh, had reduced mate forces as compared to our previous design and that there were consistent forces observed um, in any location that the chassis was placed in the manifold kind of rack. We also conducted rack level flow testing. Over on the right here, you can see a schematic of what our test setup looked like. We used our manifolds and the chassis fitted with our blind mate QCs. Um, each chassis had an orifice inside of it as well to simulate the um, impedance of a cold plate loop for testing. What we were interested in understanding was the pressure drop as well as the flow variation um, due to supplier type and location in the rack. Like Glenn said, uh, this design is all about kind of being able to switch out the blind mate vendors and, and the rack manifold vendors as well. So we wanted to make sure that we tested lots of different configurations. Um, we had both internal and external pressure sensors and flow meters uh, to measure um, these pressure drop and, and flow rate values as well. Here, I just wanted to quickly show what the um, inside of the chassis looked like. 
Each chassis was fitted with four QCs, two uh, supply and two return, as well as a valve that could be used to restrict flow if we wanted to um, test uh, in, in those configurations as well. Uh, and then, like I said, we had an orifice inside and um, uh, pressure sensors and flow meter, so we could understand what the differential pressure drop across the orifice was and compare it um, to all the chassis that were being tested, as well as compare what the flow was. We tested um, various rack configurations. Uh, we kind of changed the number of chassis that we're in. We tested 4, 8, 12, as well as really focused on mixing those QC's uh, vendors. So this eight chassis mix is sort of an example of what that might look like, where we mix and matched vendors because we wanted to understand the impact that that had on performance. What we found, um, we also did a lot of testing with different locations, so understanding if four chassis in top versus bottom, do we see an impact on flow variation? What we found was that regardless of location and regardless of kind of the QC configuration we were testing, um, that it didn't have an impact on um, our flow variation or a large impact. In all those uh, scenarios, we had a flow variation of under 5%. Uh, we were um, sort of our um, pump skit, our pump was the um, kind of restricting factor for us, so we couldn't really get above 40 LPM with um, eight or 12 chassis in. So uh, we'll be doing more testing this year uh, with a larger pump skid at higher flow rates. We did want to understand, though, what the pressure drop of the system looked like at higher flow rates, so we worked with our manifold vendors uh, and calibrated a flow network model to understand um, what our kind of pressure curve looked like. And we found that at around 80 LPM, we were still under th uh, around 3.5 PSI, but we'll be verifying this with testing in the future as well. We have written a preliminary design document, and it's been um, shared on the um, Wiki. So these are some of the topics that it covers. It covers performance targets, um, design considerations, flow performance information. Um, I really recommend checking it out if you are kind of interested in learning more. We also, in that document, have supplier contacts. If you're interested, there are early samples available. So please reach out if you're interested in that. I also want to call out that we have a great um, set up at the Experience Center with a chassis with and racks and a bunch of the QCs. You're able to sort of mix and match them on your own and mate them. It's a, I really recommend checking it out. In terms of future plans, we will be completing the testing of the latest revision of the components, as well as completing rack level flow testing at higher flow rates um, and performing alternate IT gear tube routing studies as well. In terms of a call to action, we really would love for the community to get involved. Um, we give updates on the Cold Plate Workstream um, monthly call, if you're interested. We also will provide updates on the mailing list, like we most recently shared out this uh, preliminary design document there. So these uh, QR codes here can be used to access that and join the mailing, mailing list. So yeah, let us know if you have any questions. Please feel free to reach out, and please come to the Experience Center and, and see what we've designed. And yeah, thank you so much. Any questions?